Hi everyone, today's topic is um, exporting and importing and the challenges and, and how do we actually overcome those challenges and we talk with reference to method of payment and we talk with reference to what kind of negotiation is required between an exporter and importer and at what point the payment should be made and uh, what happens in case if uh, importer is not making the payment on time and the certain challenges. We discussed this topic with the help of a case study of a small company called Ferro Industries and Ferro Industries discussion will be in the second half and the first half of uh, session would be more conceptual in terms of methods of payments, including letter of credit and so on. So let me share my screen. Okay, so now we have our PowerPoint file and the caption of file is methods of payment. So we talk about exporting and importing and we have certain uh, thumb rules to follow in exporting and importing and uh, what is useful and how to uh, decide the payment terms and conditions in exporting and importing. This is very important for you to understand. And this is also important from the point of view of companies, managers, those who do the real business in uh, daily basis. Suppose you have an importing company, you have an exporting company, you have to understand how do we actually settle the payment and what kind of uh, contract should be signed and uh, what should be the terms and conditions of this contract that I'm going to sign. So you have to be aware of such things so that you can make intelligent decisions when you negotiate with your clients or when you negotiate with your business partners. So methods of payments, that is uh, the topic. And then we will focus on letter of credit and we will discuss uh, various aspects and various dimensions of letter of credit. But we will also discuss uh, uh, what are the other methods uh, using or which can be used by importers and exporters in international trade when we do the exporting or importing. Methods of payment, advanced payments. Yeah, so letter of credit, bill of exchange and open account. There are four popular methods of payment in exporting and importing. Suppose you are an exporter or you are an importer. Uh, you can decide either to have an advanced payment. The advanced payment simply means importer will pay in advance to the exporter before the shipment. So in this case, importers would be happy to pay in advance only if importers trust the exporters. For example, if Yarlin or Nobato is importing and you are based in Puerto Rico, let's say I'm based in Japan, I'm your exporter. Will you be happy to pay me in advance? Hmm? No. Yarlin, what's your answer? Uh, no. Why, why do you say no? Um, I don't know, Japan is very far away <laughs> and you need la, like a trust or, or like a confidence with the with client and, and service, I don't know. <laughs> why do you say no, Naboto? Yes, for, for the same reason, because I, I want to be sure before making the payment that the, you know, uh, the products will be here in time and, and that I will receive what I ordered. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so sometimes, uh, you know, it is difficult to trust the companies, even if the company is renowned. Sometimes uh, some companies, suppose, let's say you are a small importer and you are importing from a very reputed company like Toyota and all, sometimes you trust that kind of famous companies. So uh, sometimes some companies uh -huh. ask you to make uh, 20 or 30 or 15 percentage advance payments. 
some of them uh, you know of course when you negotiate with your business partner you always start with uh, asking advance payment if you are an exporter but it is up to the importer to decide not to pay in advance and most importers might say no but uh, sometimes if importers are desperate to import from this particular company they might say that okay i can think about paying you 25 or 30 or 40 percent advance payment and remaining can be later so sometimes some companies do that or remaining can be with letter of credit and that kind of conditions are also there but normally uh importers tend to say no to the advance payments and uh, because uh, uh exporters uh, might delay the transaction in case if they already receive the payment and sometimes they might uh, ship uh, inferior goods if they already receive the payment suppose in case if there is a mechanism if there is a better mechanism exporters might be more reliable and exporters may be more trustable so this is the plus point otherwise uh, you know you already made a payment then it is it is it is it is a challenge for the importer because buyer as a buyer uh, you have to take care of your interests if you don't take care of your interest you are already paying very well in advance you know that person might go away so you don't know so what is going to happen so this is this is this is the case in even in local business also sometimes you cannot trust your um seller you cannot pay in advance if you pay in advance to a seller sometimes you may not he may not deliver what he promised so this is a challenge so there is a better mechanism called letter of credit letter of credit suppose in case let's say in a in a hypothetical situation an exporter and importer are negotiating to decide the payment conditions and both are unable to arrive at a consensus based uh, terms and conditions when there is no consensus what to be done so you know for example exporter would say hey importer suppose if if uh, nobato and uh, yarlin are my importers uh, i would say that uh, hey nobato hey yarlin uh, you have to pay me in advance so you might say no to me so in that case uh, i i will be also at risk if i don't receive some advance payment if i don't receive full or part or partial advance payment i also have to get guarantee that you will make payment suppose if i send my shipment to you i have to also get guarantee that you will make payment so because you are not paying me in advance when you are not paying me in advance as an exporter i will try my best to ensure that you will make my payments later if you are not paying in advance so what is the mechanism for that so i have to get some kind of guarantee from you so that guarantee i can ask as an exporter i can ask hey noberto hey jarlin so if you are not willing to pay me in advance why don't you do this way go to a bank show your credit limit ask the bank to get to open a letter of credit in my favor which is uh, going to be opened by you and bank will open a letter of credit that simply means that the bank will guarantee my payment if you default the payment if you don't pay me on time later you know we can sign the contract you know and sign the contract we will say that this is the due date uh, before that you have to pay 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 me i will undertake shipment all this will go simultaneously so at the same time i have to get guarantee just with the contract as an exporter i don't have any guarantee from the importer importer might agree to pay but that agreement between importer and exporter not good enough so as an exporter i would ask noberto i would ask jarlin hey you have to get me a letter of credit and this has to come from a well known bank and uh, well known bank will assess the credit limit of the importer and well known bank can issue a letter of credit can open a letter of credit on behalf of the importer in favor of the exporter and uh, once a letter of credit is opened exporter will have the courage or exporter will have the confidence to spend money for arranging shipments otherwise exporter may not have the confidence to arrange uh, for shipment exporter might be uh, lacking confidence otherwise because uh, exporter is not sure the importer is going to make payments so this is a situation so letter of credit is a very important mechanism or it's a very important method of payments because importers are not happy to pay in advance and exporters are not happy to do an export business without letter of credit 
because it is risky for them however some exporters do undertake export contract or do agree for export import contracts without letter of credit and without advance payment you can answer now it is open for everybody you can answer why do some exporters agree to do the export contract or agree to do the export transaction with an importer in foreign countries when they do not have advance payments from importer and the importer is not even opening letter of credit so uh, in that kind of situation as an exporter will you still do the exporting the reality is that some exporters do that and what kind of exporters do undertake uh, export transactions without advance payment and letter of credit from importer please answer jalfat or wilfredo can you answer uh, well the big ones with a, a great financial uh, power hmm um uh, probably uh that could be the case um companies like um like pharmaceutical or some some those that their products or something that they are shipping are very important uh in that way they they need the the products um on time uh no matter the if they will will be paying or not or probably they have a, a good um, relationship we between the importer and the exporter uh, because of that relationship and history um uh, they decide uh, probably they can uh, make the the export uh, without the the payment the advance payment what is your take uh, gabriel i frankly i, I mean i without an arrangement any uh, some kind of, of guarantee uh, legal document uh, that you can somehow guarantee that you will receive the payment you i mean i i, I don't see how someone will engage uh, that type of arrangement uh, most I can think of is maybe a forward <laughs> or, you know, a future or something like that. Uh, it's the only, the only thing, but uh, like an actual agreement with the company, I, I have no examples. No examples come to mind. There are two types of exporters, those who agree to do an export contract without advance payment or without letter of credit. One is that when they trust their business partner very much based on last 10 years of track record, they have been doing business with uh, each other for many, many years. It's like husband and wife, if, you know, so let's say husband and wife live together for 10 years, 15 years, they build a trust or, you know, so, uh, I mean, in care or very, very long time. So it's like, let's say, or, or you can say son and father relationship in case if son and, son and father trust each other 100% days, they, they do business uh, this way. So same way, two companies, they have been doing business for many, many years and they trust each other 100 percentage in that case they don't need a letter of credit they don't need an advance payment so this is one example plus another example is that when a parent company is doing export or import with its own its own subsidiary or its own branch in a foreign country then they don't need letter of credit or advance payments because it's it's subsidiary or a branch of the same company in a foreign country so in that case there is no need for advance payment there's no need for letter of credit and there is a third category of companies. Third category of companies are relatively small companies, small companies or small exporters. Those small exporters, they're desperate for business. You know, because uh, what happens, why some importers would like to avoid letter of credit because they can save some money, which otherwise they have to pay to the bank as the bank's fees or bank's commission to open a letter of credit, for example, if a bank is opening a letter of credit for about uh, $70,000, bank will charge $500 or $600 commission or fees 
for that service from the importer. So the many importers want to save that money. So they, they would prefer not to have a letter of credit in case if exporter is agreeing to this condition that there is no letter of credit, just to save that $500 or just to save that $600. So some importers ask for waiver from the exporters. They would say that I don't want to get a letter of credit in case if we agree and if we trust each other, we can do it without letter of credit. Some importers ask the exporters that we'll negotiate with the exporters that way and some exporters to help this uh, client because if they are doing first time and they will not agree to that, but if they have done some business together for a couple of years and they trust each other, they know each other, they have met each other. So in, in such kind of situation, some of the exporters, because they are also desperate because they might think that if I don't agree to this importer, this importer might go ahead with some other exporter so I might lose this business opportunity. When I lose this business opportunity, when I think that, you know, when I, when I, when I have a feeling that I'm going to lose this partner, so I might do this. I might, I, you know, because I'm desperate. It is like uh, uh, in, in real life, when a uh, boy is desperate for a girl, boy will pay money for ice cream. If boy, when, if boy is not desperate, boy will never pay for ice cream. So, I mean, it can be ice cream or dinner or whatever. So this is the same situation. So when, when an exporter is desperate for business with this particular business partner, this exporter might agree to whatever the importer is asking for. So uh, for example, the ferro industries case that we are going to discuss uh, today. So in this case, ferro industries didn't receive an advance payment. Ferro industries agreed to do transaction without letter of credit. There is no letter of credit in that, in, in, in that uh, case study, in that contract. So because uh, the importer had more negotiating power or importer was uh, much, uh, uh, you know, uh, more uh, kind of uh, demanding or, or exporter was relatively small compared to importer. So importer was more dominating, but exporter agreed to do the transaction because exporter was desperate for business opportunity. When you are desperate for business opportunity, sometimes you agree to whatever your client or your importer is asking you to do. So it can lead to risk. It can lead to more challenges. So like Faro Industries got exposed to challenge there because uh, there was no letter of credit and importer tried to delay the payment and everything was messed last minute. The same situation. So same situation can happen if you do a transaction without letter of credit or advance payment in case if it is a third party a third party is trying to cheat you later, third party is avoiding payment and all can be risky. But uh, some transaction takes place in that category too. Yeah. So bill of exchange, bill of exchange uh, is another or third method of payment. Bill of exchange, uh, even with the letter of credit, there is a bill of exchange. Bill of exchange is actually uh, the export bill. You know, it, the export bill is called as export bill of exchange. And bill of exchange, uh, uh, our bill of exchange can be classified as site bill and use and spill. Site bill simply means that Suppose if an exporter is going to draw a site bill, site export bill, that means importer has to make payment on site. That simply means that importer has to make payment when shipment arrives in an importer's country before importer collects the goods. That means importer, importer's due date, importer's deadline to make payment is the uh you know is, is is the site day site day means goods arrive at the port and there is a deadline uh decided between importer and exporter and importer has to make payment on site and collect the goods only after payment that is the reason it is called site bill usance bill usance bill is another type of export bill that that simply means the other side of the site bill the other side of the site bill means it is the opposite of site bill Inside bill, you see the goods, goods arrived, you make payment before you collect the goods if you are an importer. In usance bill, if you are an importer, you have negotiated with the exporter for usance facility and exporter has agreed to that. That simply means that when goods arrive at the importer's port, importers can collect these goods before making payment because exporters have given credit facility to the importer. When exporters give credit facility to the importer, it can be one month or two months or three months or four months after collecting the goods. Importer can make payment later, one month, two months, three months, four months later. That facility is called usance bill. 
sometimes exporters agree to provide this usance bill to the importer because exporters want to help the importers and exporters want to retain this client as exporters business partner in long run so uh, that is the purpose of usance bill so this is this is uh, this is how it, it works and this is how it operates so usance usance simply means importer can use the goods importer can collect the goods and use the goods before making payment in the other uh, professor um i have a question um can, can you change the terms of the payment method or or the terms of the arrangement in any time of the business or you or you cannot change any uh for example the the terms after the product is shipped or something like that yeah after the product is shipped to you you cannot change normally if you have to change uh, you have to take permission from both importers and exporters and uh, banks are involved you have to take permission from the banks also so it is complicated so once you sign the contract you have to go by the contract terms but there is some amendments possible but amendments requires everybody's consent everybody's signature okay okay thank you yeah so bill of exchange uh, or export bill export bill of exchange can be classified as two types side bill and usance bill usance bill simply means importer gets the right to use the goods before making payments so uh but again you know letter of credit comes with bill of exchange actually so bill of exchange is an instrument a letter of credit is a guaranteed mechanism so there is a difference that way so uh you know i mean you can still open letter of credit whether you have side bill or usance bill it doesn't matter your export contract might involve side bill or usance bill you can still have letter of credit because letter of credit is a guarantee bill of exchange doesn't offer any guarantee facility bill of exchange is an export document uh, but letter of credit is a guaranteeing mechanism that is the difference an open account open account is another method where when you don't have advance payment and you don't have letter of credit and then you can keep the transaction open in an account you can simply say that you will just uh, remit the payment to the bank account of the uh, exporter later and you don't offer a letter of credit you don't offer advance payment that facility is called or that that kind of arrangement trust based arrangement is called open account yeah so a letter of credit what is a letter of credit the most common form of payment is a letter of credit Yeah. So now we focus a little bit more on letter of credit because uh, it is a widely used payment mechanism, and it's widely used in different countries. It's widely used everywhere because otherwise, uh, exporters and importers cannot trust each other very well. So letter of credit works as a better mechanism to safeguard the interest of both parties, both exporters and importers. And here, what is a letter of credit? A letter of credit is an instrument for settling trade payments or export uh, payments, and it is an arrangement of making payment against documents. Of course, you have to get the documents because documents are, are the, docu the evidences so or the proof of its documents. Under the arrangement, a bank at the request of a customer undertakes to pay a third party by a given date according to agreed stipulation and against presentation of documents. The counter value of goods or services shipped. Yeah. So here, previously, I already discussed about what is a letter of credit. Here, I am formally presenting the definition of the letter of credit and what it implies. When a letter of credit is opened, a bank that opens a letter of credit on behalf of an importer has an obligation to make payment to the exporter if importer is not going to make payment. So that way, letter of credit is nothing but a guarantee 
guarantee given by a bank to pay to the exporter if importer is not paying. So bank will assess the background and the credit limit of the importer before opening a letter of credit because it is very important from the bank's point of view to do that. Under the arrangement, bank at the request of customer undertakes to pay a third party by a given date according to agreed stipulation and against presentation of documents, the counter value of goods or services shipped. Yeah. So do you understand what is letter of credit or do you have any, any question about uh, what is the basis of letter of credit? On the right hand side, you can see a, a copy of letter of credit. Can you see the right hand side, a copy of letter of credit? Yes, yes, that, that yes. was my, my question. If the document that we were seeing on the PowerPoint was a sample of a letter of credit. Yes. Yeah, for example, you are a Puerto Rican importer, you are a Florida-based importer, and uh, you are in Miami or Orlando, and then you have Bank of America there, or you have some other bank uh, like Citibank, and you go to your bank, and then you ask uh, uh, your bank to open a letter of credit on your behalf, and uh, bank will assess your credit limit, and bank will also look at your background, and bank will also look at exporter's name and details, and if it is a high value letter of credit bank will also look at credit report of the exporter because exporter's integrity is also very important. So if it is small value transaction, bank will not assess the exporter's uh, credibility or credit limit and such kind of things. But if it is a, a high value, big value transaction, bank is supposed to assess both importer's background and exporter's background. So for, for a high value transaction, for high value letter of credit. It's a small value bank will only assess the applicant's background that is importer, importer's background. Um, in, in this uh, letter of credit, I include terms like net theory um, payment or net 10, net 10 days or those kind of uh, terms of payment in, in the letter of credit. I, I include that that kind of uh, of arrangement. That, See, whatever you include in letter of credit should have consent from your uh, business partner. See, letter before you open a letter of credit, you have to sign a sales contract with your client. Okay, you are an importer and you have, suppose I'm the exporter and we have to sign a sales contract with, with the uh, importer and exporter. So especially for high value transactions, sales contract is always desirable and always advisable. But if it is small value transaction sales contract is not mandatory, you can even straight away issue a purchase order or you can straight away uh, send a you know invoice, a performer invoice or a specimen invoice of what item you are going to uh, export. And then uh, based on the invoice, you can sign and then you can agree based on that, based on invoice or purchase order for small value transactions, but for high value transactions, Proper sales contract is advisable and proper sales contract is signed between importer and exporter for any high value transactions because high value transactions means you have to go by the legal uh, channel. I mean, channel means you have to take the legal precautions that is sales contract, proper documentation, because uh, if something goes wrong, who is responsible, all the documentation should be proper. So that is the reason sales contract is advisable for a high value transaction. Sales contract means all the details of the transaction will be there part of sales contract, which include A to Z of this export import contract, which will include what is the currency, how much is the amount and what will be the shipping date and what will be the deadline or um, you know, maximum uh, you know, date, uh, like the deadline where, when 
the shipment will arrive in importers country and what will be the port and so many details like that what will be the amount what will be the um, product distribution what will be the units and how it's going to pack packaging a lot of details um, you know will be there in sales contract because sales contract is a detailed document so which is considered as uh, legal uh, in the international arena so in the international circle purchase order invoice order they are also having legal validity but they don't have all the information they they have limited information so yeah so once you have sales contract or invoice purchase order if you are an importer you copy the information from those document to your application in letter of credit and you know so you have to you have to ask your bank this is a, you have to give a copy of your uh, sales contract or purchase order and then you have to ask the bank these are this this is my contract with the exporter and you have to include all these details as it is in the letter of credit and bank will copy those details and bank will include in the letter of credit all those details and then a copy of letter of credit will go to exporter and exporter has to also agree this letter of credit then only transaction take place because otherwise if, if, if there is any discrepancy you know uh, if your exporter is not happy with your content in letter of credit then it can lead to problems so it is important to uh, you know uh, share this uh, letter of credit uh, with the exporter and take exporter into confidence because uh, confidence is important otherwise uh, if you try to do the business like a one man army without taking a business partner into confidence sometimes uh, your business will not succeed it can be a challenge general points the importer knows that the negotiating bank will not affect payment to the seller that is exporter unless and until the later 10 days the document strictly in accordance with the terms of the letter of credit the letter of credit will have certain terms and conditions and exporter has to exporter is supposed to go by those terms and conditions otherwise uh, exporter will not get payment otherwise uh, the negotiating bank that is the exporter's bank will not affect payment to the exporter if exporter is not complying with the terms and conditions included in the letter of credit and the seller the exporter is assured of getting payment as long as he presents the documents as per the terms included in the letter of credit to the negotiating bank yeah in exporting and importing payment is primarily based on the document uh, verification and document uh, documentary evidence so it is an exporter's obligation responsibility to submit certain documents as mentioned and as called for in the letter of credit to the bank where exporter is going to negotiate or exporter is going to do the transaction so it is important for exporters to understand and study the terms in the letter of credit and act accordingly general points lcs or lc it is it is known as documentary credit and they are governed by certain provisions of uniform customs and practice for documentary credits framed by international chamber of commerce paris international chamber of commerce is an important organization for facilitating exporting and importing and they have certain rules and a set of rules that uh, serve as guideline rules for letter of credit based import transactions is called as ucpdc ucpdc stands for uniform customs and practices for documentary credit international chamber of commerce the acronym is icc a letter of credit is a commitment on the bank's part to place an agreed sum at seller's disposal on behalf of buyer under precisely defined conditions this is another point
applicant or parties to letter of credit, normally buyer of the goods. Issuing bank or opening bank, bank which issues the letter of credit. It means the bank which opens the letter of credit and undertakes to make payment. Beneficiary, beneficiary is the exporter, that is the seller of the goods, who has to receive payment from the importer. And beneficiary, you know, is normally very much uh, aware of the terms and conditions of the LC and they have to study, they have to cross check what importer is included. So cross checking is a very important job here or scrutiny of LC terms and conditions is very important and critical. Otherwise, sometimes you might incur loss. A letter of credit is issued in exporter's favor to enable him or his agent to obtain payment on submission of stipulated documents. Second beneficiary, it is the person in whose name the first or original beneficiary of LC has transferred the LC, designated as transferable. Advising bank, yeah. So second beneficiary is, can be, can be there sometimes. Like uh, LCs, normally LCs are not transferable, but under some special conditions, LCs can be opened as a transferable LC. Transferable LC means, I mentioned before, there are two types of exporters. One is called merchant exporters and second one is called manufacturer exporters. Merchant exporters simply means they buy from manufacturers and they involve in exporting. They never manufacture the goods. That is category one of exporters. And category two exporters is manufacturer exporters, which means they manufacture the goods and export whatever they manufacture. So category one exporters normally, that is the merchant exporters, so when they buy the goods from manufacturers, they want to get credit from the manufacturers. In order to get credit for the goods that they buy from the manufacturers, they can ask the importer to get a letter of credit opened, which is a transferable letter of credit. Transferable letter of credit simply means that if LC has a clause that this is a transferable LC, merchant exporter can get a copy of this LC from importer and can show this to the manufacturer and negotiate with the manufacturer that I have this type of transferable LC. Why don't you give me your goods or your products on credit basis? That means I'm not going to pay you when you hand over the goods and I will collect the goods from you and then I will ship, I will export it and I will make payment when importer make me payments, when importer pays me. So till then, my guarantee to you is this transferable LC. This LC is in my name, but it has a clause, it is transferable LC. That means I can transfer the money from this LC to you. And this against this transferable LC, please give me credit. That is what many merchant exporters do it. Do you understand the difference between merchant exporter and manufacturer exporter? I want somebody from your class to answer the difference between merchant exporter and manufacturer exporter. Can you answer? Yes. Hey guys, merchant exporter, merchant exporter and manufacturer exporter. What is the difference? And um, give me give me an example. Give me an example for merchant exporter in San Juan and another example for manufacturer exporter in San Juan. Uh, well, I, I think the, the manufacturer exporter is the one that manufactures uh, the goods and, well, and export them. Man, the merchant exporter will be more of uh, the company engaged in the trading activity mm -hmm. or intending to export goods. Uh, but for example, um, 
where a manufacturer here could be a pharmaceutical, uh, that we have uh, a lot of those here in Puerto Rico. And, uh, and uh, a trading activity, I don't know, maybe a distribution center that are, are here in, in San Juan. But if, if you have any, if anyone have an idea or a better example, it would yes, be great. Several other examples also. Why, why, why can someone else can give some examples? Jarlin, can you think about any example? I'm actually thinking an example. Um, um, besides of the pharmaceutical, um, I don't know, maybe um, a, someone that makes a food export, like chips or something in Puerto Rico, would that be a manufacturing expert? There are several manufacturing exporters in in San Juan, for example, Bacardi. Bacardi makes rum. Bacardi is a famous rum making company, and Bacardi exports rum from San Juan to different other countries. Do you know that? Yes. So that's a manufacturer exporter. And Wholesome, Wholesome make bread, and Wholesome is a local company, and Wholesome makes bread, and uh, they export Wholesome bread to some other countries. They are a manufacturer exporter. There is another company called Brands of Puerto Rico. I don't know whether you know Brands. Brands. So, yeah. hmm? No, no, the, no worry. I just had a question, but finish first. Yeah, Brands, Brands of PR. So that's a company. And they, they, they are not manufacturing anything. But what they do is that they are specialized in exporting items. And they buy, you know, so different items, uh, uh, and they, they find buyers in foreign countries and they promote this as a uh, Puerto Rican brand and they're exporting uh, into different countries, brands of PR. So they have a very good website and they showcase many products from here on their website and they try to do the marketing in with uh, uh, different clients in foreign countries. And uh, they, they are an example for merchant exporter. So merchant exporters. So what is now, let me uh, come back to the point, transferable LC. So what do you understand by transferable LC and how can you use a transferable LC? For example, you are a merchant exporter. So merchant as a merchant exporter. So like I gave you one example of brands of PR, that's a merchant exporting company. And there could be some other, several other companies also. So uh, falling in the category of merchant export, if they are not manufacturing, but if they are just buying from manufacturers and uh, selling in foreign countries, they're all part of merchant exporting. So uh, what is transferable LC and how do you use transferable LC? Yes, I would like you to answer. I would like to understand whether you understand, whether you follow me. It's a, I mean, it's a basically your second, when you have a second uh, beneficiary, is it's uh, um, uh, basically defined here in the, in the, in the, on the slide. Um, you can transfer the, the uh, letter of credit to that other <clears throat> party, to that other person. So you have a, a second person that may have interest on and, and in terms of merchant LC uh, may come in handy because you are not uh, a manufacturer. You may be, may be selling it to either a branch or a, um, a, a subsidiary or you know, a franchisee or something. Uh, on the other uh, side of the ocean, and you may want to be able to transfer uh, the, the letter of credit so that they can uh, also take payment if, if needed. Yeah, so let's, let's uh, can, can somebody give the real example? For example, let's uh, talk about brands of PR. So let's say brands of PR, they have an arrangement with the coffee manufacturer in PR. Uh, and and they they will uh, sell this coffee uh, in in European country, 
or Asian country. And this European buyer, European importer will give a letter of credit. And uh, how can this brands of PR can use this LC as transferable LC? Yes, please answer. Well, like, like I said, I mean, if you are, um, brands of Puerto Rico is not selling their own product, they're not manufacturing it. Um, they are buying from someone else and selling. So the transferable LC uh, can serve many, many, uh, I mean, it can, can be really useful in that case you can use it as, a, I don't know, like an evidence of payment to the, your suppliers um, you can um, uh, pay, I guess, part of the uh, of your investment um, uh, using it. I would imagine. Um, can't think of any other um, <laughs> way to use it in that in, in terms of brands of Puerto Rico. But. It's very simple. So suppose if they don't have this transferable LC, they have to pay in advance, or they have to pay on on site or on the spot from the real manufacturer in PR, right? So, uh, and brands of Puerto Rico, brands of PR would not be happy to do that because uh, it is risky for them and they have to also mobilize resources and finance to pay these manufacturers in advance or at the time of purchase, at the time of purchase. So if they have a LC, which is called as transferable LC from importer and they can simply show this and they can simply give a copy of that to the real manufacturer in PR and can simply get the item on credit basis from the real manufacturer. And they can say that you keep a copy, this is a transferable LC. And uh, when I get the payment from the importer, I will actually pay the, I will, I will transfer the payment at that time. But now you keep the copy of LC and we will have a memorandum of understanding based on this copy of transferable LC that uh, uh, the amount will be transferred to you and uh, there is a clause that this is a transferable LC and, and uh, you give me uh, the product on credit basis so that uh, the real manufacturer in PR will give the product on credit basis to brands of PR. So both parties interests are safeguarded otherwise brands of PR needs a lot of money to buy from manufacturer in advance and it is risky for brands of PR. So brands of PR can simply ask the importer, hey importer, get me a letter of credit and also it should be transferable letter of credit. So then it becomes easier for brands of PR, you know. Do you understand? Yes. Everybody? Yes. Yeah, so that way brands of PR does not have, there's no doubt to think about too much uh, resources and too much finance. So if they can get uh, a transferable LC from the buyers. Advising bank, that's the uh, next uh, point. Uh, parties to letter of credit, these are all different parties to letter of credit. Advising bank advises a letter of credit to the beneficiary, thereby assuring, assuring the genuineness of the letter of credit. It's normally situated in the country or place of beneficiary, that is the country of exporter. Yeah, LCs are open, which we discussed. Banks open letter of credit on behalf of importer in favor of exporter. However, there are some fraudulent transactions in different countries because human beings, 10 percentage of human beings or 15 or 20 percent of human beings, sometimes even 25 percentage of human beings get involved in fraudulent transactions. This is, this is unfortunate in every sector, in every country. This is universal. This is not just a matter of one particular country. So because there are fraud people and because there are issues like this, historical problems and I mean, you know, so there have been some issues, fraudulent document making and that kind of thing. So banks have devised a system to check the genuineness of the letter of credit. 
because otherwise what happens is that an importer can make a letter of credit if he has a good printer. So genuineness and authenticity of the document is important. So what happens is that uh, in order to check the genuineness and authenticity, authenticity of the document, what banks do is that when a letter of credit is opened, exporter and importer also knows about this and uh, it will be opened by the bank. And uh, of course, it will be also part of the original export import negotiation and contract that the exporter and importer will agree and exporter will ask here hey, importer you have to get the letter of credit opened by a bank in your country and get this letter of credit advised by another bank in my country there will be a clause like that in almost all 99.9 percent .9 of the transactions where a letter of credit is involved exporters insist for letter of credit being advised by another bank which has a branch in exporter's country. The symbol, logic or rational for this functioning called advising is to check the genuineness of the letter of credit, or is to check the authenticity of this letter of credit to make sure that this is not a fraud document. And in order to get this advising done, the LC opening bank will send the document through the banking channel to the suggested bank in exporter's country. And that bank in exporter's country will check the authenticity of the letter of credit received from importer's bank. When the document passed through the banking channel, then the exporter's bank also would be aware that this has come from importer's bank and importer's bank is a reasonably well-known bank and exporter's bank knows about this bank so they can easily check the authenticity of the document when the document goes to exporter's bank and uh, it need not be exporter's bank where exporter has the account it can be a third party bank it can be any bank Normally, a multinational bank plays the role of advising bank, but any well-known bank can play as an advising bank. So it is not normally the bank where exporter has an account. It is normally a third-party bank. And that third-party bank will act as an advising bank and they will issue a statement that this LC is genuine and we advise that this LC is genuine or authentic. And that function is called advising bank and that function is part of this chain, part of this business, part of this uh, uh, activities involved in export import contract with the letter of credit to ensure that this is not a fraud document, to ensure, to minimize the fraudulent transaction and to ensure authenticity and genuineness of the letter of credit, we do this advising bank role. Confirming bank is the bank which charge guarantee to the letter of credit opened by another bank, thereby undertaking the responsibility of payment or negotiation. Yeah, so this is another 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 function or another another type of uh, role involved. So advising bank, advising bank only certify that this letter of credit is genuine or this letter of credit is authentic. That's it. Sometimes it's not only authenticity that matters. Sometimes exporters want double guarantee. Double guarantee means exporters normally always ask importers, hey importer, you have to get the letter of credit open. You have to also get the letter of credit advised by another bank, which has a branch in my country. This is normal. These two are normal. But sometimes beyond these two conditions, some exporters are concerned about the integrity of the importer. Some exporters are concerned about uh, the integrity of the LC opening bank also. Because exporters cannot insist to the importer that you have to get the LC opened by a particular bank. Exporter cannot insist that. So when exporter cannot insist in such a situation, and also in case if client and the country are risky, 
sometimes uh, exporters can easily assess whether this client or the country of the client are risky. When exporter is suspicious, like that, risky situation, exporter can ask the importer, hey importer, you have to get this letter of credit opened, not only opening, but also this letter of credit need to be confirmed by a well-known third party bank, which has a presence in my country, that function is called confirmation. Confirmation simply means that it is not only the LC opening bank that will give guarantee, but also if another bank agrees to do the confirmation of this letter of credit, that bank will give double guarantee. That means that bank will undertake the responsibility to make payment to the importer. If import, I mean, not payment to the importer, payment to the exporter. If importer and importer's bank defaults the payment. So it's simple. If importer and importer's bank defaults the payment, another bank which has a presence, which has a branch in exporter's country, will agree, will confirm the LC, and that confirmation simply implies that LC confirming bank will make payment if importer and importer's bank that opens the LC default the payment. So that means LC confirmation is a double guarantee. It is, it is like 10 times better than LC advising from the point of view of exporter but it is not required to be done from the point of view of importer because it will add on to extra cost for the importer because the commission or the fees that the LC confirming bank will charge is too much. So importers normally don't like to have LC confirmed because it is very expensive. So normal function is that get the letter of credit opened and get the letter of credit advised. That's enough. LC confirmation is not a daily common thing, but LC opening and LC advising is very common. They are very common. So now you tell me, what is the difference between LC advising and LC confirmation? I would like you to answer. Advising is more about the uh... Uh, how to make sure that the letter of credit is, is it's a uh, genuine, you know, it's a uh, it's it's valid, and confirming is more uh, for adding um, a, an additional guarantee um, but may, for any reason. Maybe the bank is not the solid, or for for whatever reason, uh, maybe the uh, importer may request it. Okay, so I have sub question, sub questions so others can answer. Uh, maybe Jaffa or Jarlin or Wilfredo or Jennifer or Noboto can answer sub questions. Suppose you are the exporter. Would you like to have your LC opened by importer be advised or be confirmed? So if you are an exporter, what would you prefer? Advised or confirmed? I think confirm because it offers a much greater guarantee that the payment will be received than, than the advising bank. The advising bank only, you know, certifies that the, the LC is le legitimate. Mm -hmm. So, but, it, but like, uh, of course, it is, it is good for the exporter to get LC confirmed, but uh, it is uh, additional expenses for the importer. It is, uh, if you ask the LC to be confirmed, uh, that simply means that it is extra cost for the importer. So importer does not want to do that. So, uh, you know, so that is the reason. So many, 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 many transactions or majority of the transaction doesn't involve LC confirmation. It's just LC opening and LC advising. That is how 99% of transactions are taking place. Only 1% of transactions are done with LC confirmation. Because it is a, it is it is it is an extra step. It, it involves additional cost for the importer. So importers are not interested in LC confirmation. But in case and exporters also 
they ask the importers to get the LC confirmed only in case if they are suspicious about the importer and if they are suspicious about the importer's country. So in that case, uh, they, they might uh, do that. For example, uh, let's say you have an importer in Nigeria, you have an importer in those kind of risky countries in Africa or any other risky country or even Venezuela, risky country. So in such a situation, you will ask uh, uh, you know, LC to be confirmed. And this confirmation is also done by a bank uh, uh, which which has a branch uh, in uh, exporter's country. So that way, if you are an exporter, it is good for you because uh, if bank is confirming this LC in you, which has a presence, which has a branch in your country, so you are you you can feel comfortable. Otherwise, uh, it is it, it can be somewhat challenging. But it is only as I said, it's only one percentage LC confirmation. LC advising is very common. LC opening and advising is common, but LC confirmation is not a common activity. Yeah, suppose if you are an importer. So another sub question for others is that if you are an importer, uh, you know, what would be your preference? Will you get LC opened or will you get uh, LC advised or will you get LC confirmed? What would be your preference? Uh, well, open will be uh, easier uh, and, and cheaper. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so if you're an importer, you hardly prefer LC confirmation because it is an additional expense. So, you know, so you would not prefer additional expense uh, and, and, and so you don't want to spend a lot of money for this kind of transaction. So you will, you will agree to get the LC opened. And many times, suppose if you have more negotiating power than exporter, you don't even agree for letter of credit, like Ferro Industries and USAF. Yusuf, Yusuf had more negotiating power than Faro Industries. So Yusuf did not open a letter of credit. So that is the reason, that is the fundamental reason for all the problems Faro Industries faced with the Yusuf in that particular case study. So if Yusuf had a letter of credit, Faro Industries would not have that kind of problems. So, okay, so now we are going ahead. Yeah, so rebasing bank, I will I will skip this. It is not very important. And uh, yeah, so these are some steps uh, involved in a letter of credit. A typical import transactions with a letter of credit steps. These are sequential steps. Normally, importer signs a purchase contract for buying of certain goods with the exporter, and importer requests his bank to open a letter of credit in favor of his supplier. Yeah. An importer's bank uh, opens letter of credit as per the application given by the importer. And the LC opening bank will forward the original letter of credit to the advising bank. Advising bank will be in exporter's country. It is not the bank with whom exporter has an account, it is a different bank. An advising bank will advise that this is the genuine LC and they will give the copy, copy of document to the exporter and importer, both parties and uh, exporter's bank also. The advising bank, after satisfying itself about the authenticity of the letter of credit, will forward the same to the exporter. And then the exporter scrutinize the letter of credit to ensure that it confirmed to the original terms of contract with the importer. That is important because LC terms should be tally with the original terms and conditions agreed between an exporter and importer. In case if any terms are not as agreed, the importer will be asked to make the required amendment to the letter of credit. Yeah, suppose in case if exporter finds some discrepancy, exporter can ask importer, hey importer, my friend, my business partner, please uh, make this amendment because this is not as per the original terms and conditions which we have agreed. For example, we agreed for US dollar 50,000 and in the LC you say it is Euro 50,000, it is a discrepancy because it is not the same currency that we agreed before. So such discrepancies need to be uh, resolved if there is any discrepancy. In case if letter of credit is okay, as required exporter proceed to make arrangement for the goods. Yeah. And if exporter is proceeding to make arrangement for the shipment of the goods, if everything is okay, exporter will affect the shipment of the goods. After the shipment is effected, the exporter will prepare export documents, including bill of exchange and negotiating bank. That is normally the exporter's bank where exporter has an account. Verify all the documents with the letter of credit. 
to check whether documents are as per letter of credit conditions. If documents are in conformity with the terms of letter of credit, and if all other conditions are satisfied, then the bank will negotiate the bill. Exporter receives the payment in his bank account. Yeah, this is the next step. The LC issuing bank receives the bill and documents from exporter's bank. Yeah, so this is another step, next step. And then importer receives the bill from the bank and checks the document and he accepts or pay the bill. If uh, the bill of exchange is you sense bill of exchange, importer will accept. If bill of exchange is site bill, importer will pay the bill. Yeah. So on acceptance or payment, importer gets the shipping documents covering the goods purchased. The LC issuing bank reimburses the negotiating bank and the amount if the documents are found in order. Yeah, so I think this is uh, good enough for today's uh, discussion because uh, there are different types of LCs which uh, can share this uh, PPT with you. So transferable LC, which we already talked about, this is being explained in detail here. And uh, this is another copy copy of transferable LC. Uh, you know, so it will be printed that this is a transferable LC. There will be clause and then that it will be printed a transferable LC because it is to facilitate a, a credit facility, you know, so for the merchant exporters. Yeah, so these are different types of LCs. UCPDC, UCPDC I already talked about. These are sets of rules formulated by International Chamber of Commerce, which is headquarters in Paris. And UCPDC has different articles like Article 1, Article 2, Article 4. So different articles like uh, police rules. So uh, Article 4 in credit operations, all parties concerned deal with documents, not with goods. So documents, you can trust uh, parties based on documents. That is what is Article 4 talking about. Advising banks liability. This is uh, Article 7. You know, what is advising banks' role and liability? So, different articles talk uh, different things, and uh, Article 10 talks about type of credit. This includes uh, uh, side bill, usance bill, deferred payments, and such kind of things. Different articles. What is the role of the bank? What is the role of importer? What is the role of exporter? All these are discussed uh, in UCPDC. So, uh, yeah, so I, I, I would uh, wind up my PowerPoint uh, based on this.